I want you to pay close attention to this video if you are an Adventist. That Seventh-day Adventism is a growing problem. This video is going to be part one and will come with part two tomorrow, God's willing. These guys you see on your screens have planned to destroy the SDA church in a very massive way, but they are not going to win because the church is God's church and nothing can overcome the church of God. So in this video, we are going to listen to what they said or what they are planning to do against the church. And after that, we'll add my thoughts. All right, so let's get right into the video. So I think that everyone present in this room can agree that Seventh-day Adventism is a growing problem. Over 22 million members worldwide as of last June, and some other statistics to give you some context. In 2021, there were just over a million accessions. I assume most of you know what that means. That, that means new members, converts. That does not include births. Over a million. That averages out to one accession every 30 seconds or so. One new congregation every 3.62 hours. And at the same time, and I'm sure this will also be of interest to you, in 2021, there were almost 800,000 losses, which equals people leaving. That does not include deaths. Over the past 15 years, the rate of net losses is about 42%. Is that something to celebrate? Or, in truth, are many of these people, perhaps even most, adventized and spiritually damaged and confused and in need of rescue themselves, even though they have walked away? Now, for me as a missionary, and, and Richard alluded to this, I take special note of the following numbers. In 2021, the top 20 countries in terms of Adventist membership make up, made up nearly 75% of the world total. Three quarters in just 20 countries. 11 of those top 20 countries are in Sub-Saharan Africa. And amazingly, those 11 countries, their membership makes up nearly 40% of the world total. So my real world challenge, my day-to-day -day challenge, is I help believers in Kenya and Uganda and Zambia and Malawi and so forth, is how can we best persuade Christians in Africa that Adventism is so biblically unsound that its false teachings need to be firmly rejected and its followers need to be evangelized. Because Adventism has a rather high reputation in these countries where it is so well established and growing at such a clip. You see, I've learned in a 40 some years of going to Eastern Southern Africa, lay African Christians don't do nuance well. They just want to know, is it true or is it false? Is it a cult or isn't it? And not a lot in between is satisfying to them. Now, we have a problem because Adventism is the duckbill platypus of Christianity. It defies easy categorization. And Adventist attitudes toward us, what do you call it? Is it schizophrenia? Is it gaslighting? Uh, you know, one minute they want to sing Kumbaya with all the Protestants, and the next minute, they're the remnant church of Bible prophecy, and Sunday worship is the mark of the beast observed by Babylon and her harlot daughters. <laughs> Which is it to be? Depends, doesn't it? Which brings me to a dilemma that we face sometimes, not only in Africa, but here in the United States. How do we best label this growing problem called Adventism? Because whatever label we choose, we want to be taken seriously by two distinct audiences. Outsiders, which is to say non-Adventists, in which case our objective is to warn and explain, and Adventists, in which case our objective is to evangelize. As a practical matter for the purposes of this talk, I want to focus on persuading outsiders 
that is, uninformed and frequently skeptical Christians. What label do we use? Option one, denomination. Even most Adventists seem to be just fine with this. Definitely not an inflammatory word. Option number two, new religious movement. Not widely applied to the Adventists, as it seems rather improbable. 169 years old equals new. But scholars such as Irving Hexham have used it. This too is not inflammatory. It might have someone scratching their heads, but they won't get angry. Option three, sect. From the Latin secta, meaning party or school or faction. Not flattering, but also not inflammatory. Option four, the C word, <laughs> cult. It's, it's, it's better with just a, a little bit of, you know, cult. Well, this word is almost always inflammatory, prompting either curiosity or outright hostility. It's a loaded word. It's best used with discretion and restraint. It can come across as mean-spirited and harsh and intended to cause injury. Kind of a verbal weapon. And bear in mind that popular everyday use of the word cult is largely based on two perceptions, deviance and harm. Deviance as in, this group looks offbeat, unconventional, a little unsettling, maybe creepy. Harm. This group is capable of dangerous things, and I don't want to be there when they happen. So, just to help you imagine this a little better, in relation to using cult to describe Adventism, picture this conversation with me and a skeptical Christian. Me. Most people don't know this, but the Seventh-day Adventist Church is a cult. The Seventh-day Adventist Church is not a cult. You know, many Sunday-keeping Christians have labeled the SDA Church as a cult, but it is not. I don't know why they do this, but I think that they are doing this to prevent other people from joining the SDA church, but it's not going to work. So you let's finish watching the whole video and we'll add my thoughts at the end, all right? Let's continue. Skeptic, what do you mean? Like, like the Manson family? Like Jonestown? Uh, the, the Order of the Solar Temple? Branch Davidians? Om Shin Rikyo? Nexium? Me, well, well, no, I mean, they're not brainwashing their followers into killing people or, or committing suicide or branding their women with a hot iron. Skeptic. Oh, so like Adventists are, are what? Like the Mormons or the Jehovah's Witnesses? Me. Well, not exactly like them. You see, those groups are kind of authoritarian and you can tell right away that their doctrines are really kind of weird and extreme, you know, like polytheism and special underwear and forbidding blood transfusions and voting. Skeptic. Okay, but what do you mean? A bit, a, bit, a quick, quick bit, if I can spit it out, of historical background. So none of you is probably, very few of you are probably old enough to remember these things, but 60 or so years ago, prominent evangelical authors and theologians easily applied the label cult to Seventh-day Adventism. Men like Gordon Lewis, Lewis Talbot. But prominent evangelical authors and theologians today are often unwilling to use the cult label. And these include James Beverly. So that by way of background. Now in my experience, dealing with a lot of people, I'll be very interested to know what Jim says. Uh, evangelicals do tend to just compare Adventism with the big two cults, the 19th century American cults, Mormonism and Jehovah's Witnesses. But you've probably noticed that Adventists appear less exclusionary and cult-like for a variety of reasons, including ecumenical outreach. 
They're not so openly strident in denouncing other churches. Thousands of schools, which by the way, non-Adventists can attend. Hospitals and clinics around the world, which non-Adventists can benefit from. Not to mention international relief work, thinking here of ADRA, and seemingly greater tolerance for internal dissent than these other two groups. And in all five categories, Adventism compares favorably with the Mormon church, and even more favorably, by far, with the Jehovah's Witnesses, who are more clearly world-rejecting as an institution. So when considered next to its two closest competitors, Adventism seems less culty, you know? Have you noticed this? Now, many people being good-hearted, in a sense, seem quite willing to give Adventists the benefit of the doubt, rather than to view them antagonistically, especially since the church can be evasive and deceptive about what it really believes and what its history really was, and quite skillful in doublespeak and gaslighting uninformed inquirers. So, cults. The more formal definitions of the word cult tend to focus on two areas, behavior and beliefs. Now, behavior takes us into the province of psychologists and sociologists. We're not going there tonight. Beliefs, however, take us into the realm of theology, doctrinal orthodoxy, and heresy. How should we understand these words, orthodoxy and heresy? And this is how he defines cult, quote, a religious group originating as a heretical sect and maintaining fervent commitment to heresy. What is his definition of heresy? Quote, a teaching which opposes the essentials of the Christian faith, so that true Christians must divide themselves from those who hold it. Now, if those are our operational definitions of cult and heresy, then mm, Seventh-day Adventism is a, as a theological system is a clear candidate. But again, to repeat, using the word cult to label Adventism can easily alienate both of the audiences we ostensibly want to persuade. These people that you saw on your screens are so amazed. They can't understand why the SDA church is growing at a faster rate like that. So they are trying to do everything possible to destroy the SDA church. And what are they doing? They are preventing people from joining the SDA church by labeling the SDA church as a cult. You know, you know this, this, this man said it, that when they label the SDA church as a cult, it will alienate people from joining the church. Also, friends, they are trying to say a lot of incorrect things about our doctrines just to prevent people from joining the church. So they attack the doctrine of the investigative judgment or the doctrine of Christ's ministry in the heavenly sanctuary. They also attack the doctrine of the Sabbath. They attack the doctrine of the end time messages of the SDA church, the preaching of their three angels' messages. In fact, they attack Ellen G. White and other important truths within the SDA church. More and more people are joining the church every Sabbath, every day, and they are surprised. They are surprised. And now they are targeting Africa. They want to find ways to prevent people in Africa from joining the SDA church, but it will not work too. You know, friends, the same thing happened during the time of the apostles. You know, when the Christian church was growing, there were some people who tried to crush the church. They tried to stop the growth of the church by imprisoning some of its leaders and also by restricting the preaching of the good news. But what happened? It never worked. It never worked. Friends, Acts chapter 5 verse 27 says, and when they had brought them, talking about the apostles or let me say the disciples, 
they set them before the council. And the high priest asked them, saying, Did we not strictly command you not to teach in this name? And look, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood on us. And when you read verses 38 and 39, it's so amazing. It says, And now I say to you, keep away from these men and let them alone. For if this plan or this work is of men, it will come to nothing. But if it is of God, you cannot overthrow it, lest you even be found to fight against God. So friends, the people could not stop the growth of the church. And in the same way, the SDA church is God's church and no one can stop the growth of the church. Now friends, he mentioned in the video that the SDA church is a problem. <laughs> I think the SDA church is a problem for them because they are losing members. Their members are joining the true church. They are joining the SDA church. That is why the SDA church has become a problem for them. You know, and also our messages are exposing their errors, their false teachings. You know, so when <laughs> um, our messages are exposing them, we become problem for them. And so they try to attack the church. They try to stop the growth of the church to prevent people from joining the church, but it's not going to work. The SDA Church is a Christian denomination. We believe in God, we believe in His Word, and also we believe that we are saved by faith through Christ Jesus. We also believe in keeping the Ten Commandments because we believe that they are the commandments of love. You know, they demonstrate our love for God and also our love for our fellow human beings. We don't keep the commandments to end salvation because we believe that salvation is a free gift from God which is found in Jesus Christ. But that does not mean that we should ignore the commandments of God, the commandments of love. You know, we cannot murder, we cannot steal, we cannot commit adultery because of grace. The church is not wrong in any way in its doctrines, alright? So... Friends, as I said, this is part one of the video and will come with part two tomorrow. You know, I'm going to lay out the errors in uh, everything that is said about the SDA church and present the truth. All right. So, friends, this is where I'm going to pause for today. And... Uh, I'm inviting in your comments right now. Let us know what you think about what they said about the SDA church. Let us know what you think about this video, all right? And I would like you to share this video with every Seventh day Adventist so that we can all know what these people are planning against the church, what they are doing against the church, so that we can know that all the labelings, all the false accusations about our teachings are meant to prevent people from joining the SDA church. Friends, thank you for watching. My name is Lawrence, as usual. See you tomorrow. God bless.